Good evening, book lovers. Welcome to the 10th episode of Cath Lit Live. I'm your host, Amy Catapan, pen name AJ Catapan. If you are new to Cath Lit Live, here's what we do. I bring you short interviews with Catholic authors who have new books releasing. And Cath Lit Live is sponsored in part by the Hello Prayer app. And I mention it because you can get a free trial of the Hello Prayer app um, by clicking the link I'm going to leave in the show notes below. And you'll be helping to support Catholic Live if you download this free trial. It's great. If you haven't heard of it, I've been using the Hello app since August of 2019. It's got in it all sorts of audio guided prayers, sleep stories, um, music. That's some of my favorite stuff to listen to. Um, Father Mike Schmidt's Bible in a Year. If you're doing that, his podcast is on here too. And the cool thing is not only do you get to listen to his podcast, when you're done, it gives you a little journal thing. You can type your thoughts in there too. So check it out in the links below the Hello Prayer app, get your free trial. But tonight, what we are doing, is so we're gonna be talking with Erin Brostall. She's the editor of Perpetual Light Publishing and the author of God Made the Moonlight. She is a Catholic wife and homeschooling mother of eight. She loves reading, skiing, and playing music with her family. So we're gonna be talking with her tonight about her new book, God Made the Moonlight. Please welcome to the show, Erin Brostall. Woo! Hi, Erin. Oh, I still have you on mute. Oh, that was a good plan. This is what's so fun about going live. Hi, Erin, how are you? <laughs> Hi, Amy. <laughs> It's all good. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. So we're talking about your new book, uh, God Made the Moonlight. Give us your yes. little 30 second elevator pitch. What is that book about? Okay. My book is a children's book. It's a read aloud. And here it is. Maybe I can show it for a minute. It is a read aloud for zero to five, newborn to five. And it is about a journey story of a girl who goes with her brother in the summer to visit her grandparents. And there's not very many books with grandparents actually in them. Um, and she sees the moon wherever she goes in different phases and the different way the light interacts with her. And she thinks of it as God watching over her because it always changes, but it's always there. And she sees it in the city and she sees an airplane fly across it in the airport and all kinds of um, interesting places like that. And Jeannie Egolf's illustrations are fantastic. It's wow. been called atmospheric by one of my kind people on Amazon for a review. So I'm very excited to bring it to people's attention. Nice. Okay. Um, yeah, we've had other books um, that have been illustrated by Erin. Now tell us what inspired you to write this particular book. I wrote this book when I was nursing my fifth baby, and I've always liked um, space and the moon. And I was a young astronaut student back in eighth grade. I actually went to Space Academy. Oh, cool. So I've been, I've been a fan for a long time of the moon. And this book is sort of written from my perspective as a seven-year-old driving in the car, visiting people and seeing the moon. And uh, just it was a Holy Spirit moment. The words just came to me, and I was writing it literally at two o'clock in the morning. I like that idea of the moonlight being out there, kind of being like God all the time, but you can't always see it. Um, right. What are you currently working on? And what's, what's after God made the moonlight? I'm working on a book on St. John Bosco. And okay. I don't know when that's going to be done. I'm in the middle of several different projects. And I'm also editing a new um, middle grade book for like nine to 13 year old boys. And it's going to be fabulous. It's by a brand new author. Her name is Janine Zhao. It's really going to be good when it's done. Right. Um, and the one on St. John Bosco, is that going to be a picture book as well? Like God Made the Moonlight yes. or what? Okay. So yeah, same book. age group. Okay, great. Yeah. Then tell me, what do you love about being a Catholic author? How does that play out in your writing? I like the camaraderie of it. I love discovering the Catholic world of teen books and children's books and adult books. And I'm a big G.K. Chesterton fan, and I'm a member of the Catholic Writers Guild. And I've represented the Guild at the Columbus Catholic Women's Conference for the past three years. And it's so fun getting to meet people who are excited about writing and poetry and all, just all kinds of writing and people from all walks of life. So that's fun. There's, you know, 90 year old grandmothers who want to be published. <laughs> and there's kids who come up to me and say, can I get my book published? And it's great. It's really fun. Wonderful. Okay, so where can people find out more about you and your books? So they have websites, you have a particular social media platform you like to use. Where can we find out more about you? 
I do. My personal website is 8hobbits.com and 8 is spelled out E-I-G-H-T H-O-B-B-I-T-S.com. And I do book re uh, book reviews for the Writers Guild and for other people. Um, special needs authors is a focus of mine. Um, children's mm -hmm. books, teen books, um, and my Moonlight book is there. And then I'm also, I'm the editor of Perpetual Light Publishing, which is a new venture. And we have several books for Christmas. One is on the Annunciation. It's called A Mouse and a Miracle. And one is Jeannie Egolf's new Molly McBride book, Molly McBride and the Christmas Pageant, which is very funny. And it's on the virtue of obedience, which is really good around Christmas time when your kids are going stir crazy. <laughs> you know, everybody, every parent knows that the, the week before Christmas is just like, oh, <laughs> so stressful. So um, people can start planning their buying for next year already right. for Christmas. Mm -hmm. You got a couple of book ideas out there for them. If and you can find them on Amazon. You can find them at perpetuallightpublishing.com. Um, we have several up and coming authors. Very exciting. And um, Kathy Gilmore is one of our partners. She's with Virtue Works Media. So you can also check out all of her work, virtueworksmedia.com. Um, and that does seem to be a common thread too. Is that in is that on purpose? You said you're the editor of Perpetual Light Publishing. So is it on purpose that virtue is a kind of a common theme in a lot of your books there? It is. Yeah, it is. Um, but we're not trying to be preachy about it. We're trying to, in the case of Kathy Gilmore, she's writing on the mysteries of the rosary. So that obviously goes along with a lot of the virtues. And then some of our other books, we have the virtue of obedience. We have Wendy's wacky wardrobe, which is on the virtue of temperance, not buying everything in sight for little girls or donating things when you have extra things. And Wendy starts a, a school clothing drive, which is a good thing. <laughs> Um, and of course we want to do books for boys too. So, uh, but it's not a slamming you over the head book, uh, kind of, uh, theme. My book, God made the moonlight is for anybody. It's not specifically Catholic, but yet I've had people tell me it's not Catholic. And I'm like, this is the most basic Catholic that it gets. This is teaching little children how to pray, how to be aware of God, how to be aware of nature. It doesn't start any earlier than that. It is of course Catholic. So, right. Right. It sounds like a little like um, when I was younger, my mom was in charge of the preschool program at my Catholic church. And I was one of the young teacher helpers and then a teacher when I was in high school. And that program was the, I taught the four year old program for years. It was all about teaching kids how much God loves you because he gives you things like the sense of smell and the sense of taste. Like right. sometimes theology yeah. at that age, it has to be on a really basic level of understanding that God created you and he loves you. Right. And it's basic, but it's profound too. And I've yeah. had a lot of adults really enjoy the book as well. So, well, wonderful. Good. All right. Well, we wish you the best and thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thanks, Amy. All right. Thanks, Aaron. All right. I'm going to push Aaron back down for a bit and just say a quick thank you to all of you for joining us again. Please, if you have read any of Aaron's books or the books that she mentioned here today, go ahead and share this video or comment on YouTube or on Instagram. And of course, don't forget to subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Follow me on IGTV for more episodes of Catholic Live. And don't forget, check the link to get your free trial of the Hello Prayer app. Until next time, everybody, happy reading.